Hey guys, what's up? This is Swift here, and I'm here back again for the second part of uh, the how to backup your DIY NAS or server. This time around, we'll learn how to backup into a remote location. Uh, this is uh, only possible if your remote server has a SSH server set up, so uh, do take note about that. So without further ado, let's jump straight into uh, how to do it. First things first, we will have to get a few things straight. Um, your remote server, even if it has a SSH server setup, it should be using a key-based authentication system and not the password system. Now, uh, if you haven't already done so, I believe that you should switch over to the key-based uh, key authentication system because it is much more secure and uh, and is safer, so on and so forth. So. First, once we have that out of the way, what we're going to do here is to uh, first thing first is to I suggest that you create a new user, and this user is specific and uh, to um, your 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 look server which you want to log into. Uh, I suggest you doing a new new user as well because you can uh, limit it to other things in future, and uh, it just becomes much more customizable instead of using your current user on your remote server so uh on your remote server here on the right here we have my remote server which is my web server currently uh it's swift4.net and on the left is my diy nest you can see on the top left is swift nest so on the remote server uh, what we're going to do here is type in the following command sudo user at dash d slash home slash tutorial dash m tutorial now uh, the first portion here is to say the home directory to specify the home directory of this user so uh, this will do if you want to um, put in you can just change it accordingly but for this how to I'll just put it like that simply enter now the next thing you want to do is to type in uh, sudo password tutorial uh, this is not necessary but I usually like to do that to give it a more sense of completeness sake, a uh, more complete user. Now you want to create a, another folder here within the home folder of this new user. And you can type me sudo mkdir slash home slash tutorial slash dot ssh. Now this will allow us to create the uh, authorized list later on, which will allow for the enabled access of the ssh, in allow our local server to ssh into this um, remote location. So once we have all that done, uh, we can jump straight into the local server here. Now what you can type here, because uh, CronTab uses the root user, what we want to do here is everything with sudo so that uh, it creates um, the keys and so on and so forth for the root user. So you can type in sudo ssh-keygen. Sorry. Uh, now you can use the default location that is fine. And uh, if it already exists, it means that you already created uh, a key and that you might be actually using it to, in other locations. So if that's the case, uh, I, I think you should just skip this step and not overwrite it. Uh, for my case as well, I'm going to press N. Uh, if it's not created, the file will just automatically create be created and uh, it wouldn't ask you anything. So anyway, next thing you're going to do is type in sudo cat uh, slash root slash ssh slash ide underscore I say basically the location that where you save the thing but instead of having this you're gonna type add in dot pub now this key here that you see here is the uh, public key uh, and this will be used for uh, authorization and authentication so what we're gonna do here if you're using putty you simply have to select it sorry select it and this will be immediately copied into your clipboard now jumping into the remote server what you want to do is to type in sudo nano slash home slash tutorial slash dot ssh slash authorize underscore keys now within this file we're going to just paste the whatever that we have copied the key and then once we have done that exit and save it now we are all good to go already uh, next thing is to just test if it works. So you're going to type in sudo ssh, whichever username and the remote location. And you'll see that it will lock in automatically without asking you for any password whatsoever. This will mean that uh, your key is working and is your user is authorized. Now, the next part here is simply to run the command. And this is the command that you will have to do. 
The first portion here is the same. If you want to add in your other variables, go ahead. There's no stopping you. Uh, and this part here is the crucial part that you have to add in to signify that you want to uh, run a SSH connection. So dash E SSH. Now the first portion here, if you don't know already, this is the part that you have to copy to, this copy from rather. Uh, so this is the data that you have to back up. And the second part here is where you want to back up to. So uh, if it's a remote location here, you're going to type in your username at your remote server and then the directory where you want to back it up. Now this will run and then they'll back up all this into this place here at this server. So just a quick tip before we go uh, is that you can reverse this around as such. Uh, this will allow you to pull data from your remote server and back it up into your local server. Uh, this is particularly useful if you're going to do things such as, um, for example, I'm currently running such a script uh, to back up my uh, swiftworld.net, my website, into my DIY NAS. So it's pulling on my WordPress file and my, uh, my SQL databases into a backup location at my DIY NAS. So that's about it really. So what you want to do, just to show you, if you do not know already, if you don't know, uh, do read my, watch my previous video or read my previous tutorial. Uh, it's all on my website. Um, you're going to just simply change this portion into the portion that I showed you earlier, uh, which is this one. Just change without the pseudo, of course. Uh, the pseudo is just for you to test it. You can, you must, you should run that command first to see everything is working before you put it inside the cron tab here. So you simply copy and paste whatever the command is, uh, change the the timing as of which you want to uh, run the script, and uh, that will do it. So yeah, that's all it is. Uh, you're gonna start backing up to a remote server or you're gonna start pulling data from a remote server into your DIY NAS or server. Uh, so if you like this video and you find it useful, do give it a thumbs up. For more of such video, do, vi do give uh, my channel a subscribe as well as visit my website at www.swiffer.net. For the written tutorial, I have uh, left a link in the description bar and you can simply visit that article to copy and paste the different commands if you wish to do so. So that's it. I'll see you guys soon.